Look at this. This little rubber thingy here could be the answer to all my prayers. In this exciting episode, we're gonna make this secure my windows. And did you know that you can secure your data online with today's sponsor, which is Surfshark VPN? That is right, Surfshark is the sponsor of today's exciting episode and they are a VPN which secures your online data among many other things. Surfshark offers services that allow you to connect to popular websites. You can still get amazing deals on websites like Amazon and AliExpress, even if they're blocked in your country or when you're traveling. Surfshark helps you to stay safe if you're using the internet outside your home. If you often work at cafes or you travel a lot, Surfshark will keep you safe even on unknown or public networks. It encrypts your online data and keeps you safe on public Wi-Fi. Jess and I often take our computers and work with us when we go away and all of it's online so knowing that we can do it through the VPN and everything's secure is hugely important to us. They also have add-on security combos like alerts to monitor your personal data, check for potential breaches, get real-time breach alerts and protect your identity and they allow unlimited devices on one account. Surfshark offer a lot of great features, so go check them out and see what they can do for you. If you click the link in my description, you'll get 83% off and three months extra for free. Wait, 83%, is that right? Yeah, 83% off and three months extra for free. Thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this exciting episode. Scott Brown here. Check out these uh, timber doors. We have four of them here. I just picked this up from my friend Vincent here and we are gonna double glaze them. So the double glazing is gonna help, but this little product here might be very helpful if you have timber windows because we're gonna use it to seal ours up. Hey. This is where it was, eh? Yes. So those two doors that we just got from Vincent were here. One here and the other one was over here. So they have replaced them with these double glazed aluminium windows. Now the advantage, obviously, is double glazed. The other improvement you're getting when you get new windows is the mechanics of it, the hinges and the rubber seals. You've got all these draft seals here and rubber seals going down, down here, up here. When you close the door, you're actually sealing it off from the weather, sealing it off from a draft. And that's the hard thing about timber windows. So I'm hoping to replicate the aluminium doors in there with these timber doors and this seal here. It's called an AQ21 seal. I'm going to have to check the documents to make sure that I am correct about what it is made from. So let's head back to our house and see how we're going to make this seal work on the windows that we've already double glazed. Plasterboarded up. You can hear that echo now, right? This window. Let's get on with this window. So I had to pack this wall out and add some extra layers of insulation. I did that in a previous episode, and that has presented this problem. This window jam doesn't come all the way out to this plasterboard line. So when I go to put an architrave here, you have you have all this. The solution for this is also the solution for the rubber seal problem. That's just timber on timber. There's no air seal, draft seal, weather seal. So we want to hit two birds with one stone with this job.
This timber here is from the wardrobes that we took out in one of those rooms. It's absolutely filled with these nails. And it's dented and cut up and it's going to be perfect for packing out this window frame. Leverage, it's all about leverage. Okay, I think we're good. So this one goes down here like this. And the idea of this is to support the plasterboard and the sill. I'll show you that in a sec when we do the sill. All right, so this piece of wood is pretty obvious, right? It just extends the jam to the front of the plasterboard here so we can pop an architrave over the top. But I'm doing a little bit different. Usually I would do what is called a double quirk. That is basically when you move this piece of wood two to three mil out of flush, if that makes sense. If I was to put it flat like that in line and then paint it and screw it on and all the rest of it, over time that line would appear as a crack. So rather than trying to hide a line, you just make the line more obvious and then when you paint it, it's just like a feature. Just to add to the confusion, I'm actually going to make this flush like this. And then, well, I'll show you what we do after that. Oh, hi there. I'll come with bread. Mm baguette. Mm baguette. Oui. Oui, oui. <laughs> you know what? Believe it or not, I feel like another coffee. Now that we've got our building consent, we are at the stage where we're going to plan everything. We're going to knock down a chimney, that fireplace is going. This problem room here, disappearing. Big beam goes from this wall behind you, all the way down there. I kind of want to start with the beam, and that involves going under the house, digging holes. And I always thought it would be a good idea to do an episode about how we plan a renovation. You know, why does one job come before another? how to plan around if someone's living in the house that you're renovating. Um, it's something I think about a lot every time I do a job and doing it on our house presents a whole bunch of other challenges as well. So let me know in the comments if you're interested in an episode like that and um, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll do that in the future. Good coffee. You're right, I heard yelling. I'm having a nightmare. Rimu is overrated. Sure it's beautiful, native timber, but it is impossible to work with. You sand it and it's bad for your health. The dust is like quite toxic and you get lodged in your lungs. And it breaks every screw and nail that you try to put into it, especially this old stuff which is dry as a bone. I'm getting very frustrated. So I'm gonna effectively pilot hole most of my way through. It's ridiculous. Did you ever think all those years working in Auckland that too dry timber would be your problem? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Safety first. A hundredth time is a charm. Now the screws keep breaking. The episode ends here, and we don't seal a window. We move on with our lives. I go have a cry, and um, you wait for the next exciting episode. Ah!
There we go, it worked. I'm over it now. Now, the part that we actually, the whole point of this episode is the jams. We've got something solid now to nail my new jam to. We need to put the jam there with the window seal grooved into it, cut into it, curved into it. Either way, I've already tried to do this. I've already tried to seal these windows. If you look right here, see this rubber strip? This was my ill-fated attempt at sealing the window. So it was all good when the window was closed like that, but as soon as you try to open it, see the awning just comes in and just destroys whatever rubber seal you have there. I tried to do this the day after we double glazed it, and now I'm gonna do it properly. After a little bit of research, some better weather stripping, and some lessons learnt. The groove area that you need for it to attach happens to be the same thickness as my table saw blade. One of the hard things about doing renovation work is you're often doing things for the first time, every time. It's an argument to be made for getting the pros to do the individual jobs. But when it's your own house, you have to make exceptions. This is working well though. I actually got the idea for this from my mate Todd up in Auckland. When we did the villa and bungalow renovations in Auckland, he did all the windows, the sash and case windows. He made them all double glazed and put this stuff on. It's got like a um, vinyl, I think, coating over the top of the foam that protects it so it shouldn't tear like that cheap stuff that we used the first time. Okay, so this clips in really nicely in here, which I'm happy to say. All right, so this is the top jam. Let's do the two sides. It's not breaking. Screws aren't breaking. Screwed shut forever. So the key is to be in enough to get a seal, but not in too much, where the awning window won't work. So I'm gonna go up, just a little bit. See, that's, it. that's pretty good there. So the good thing about what this foam is made out of and the fact that it's shaped like a triangle, it's, it's got a memory, so it always springs back to its original position. But the triangle shape of it will allow it to be open in some areas and closed in other areas. So this isn't perfect. And this triangle seal can kind of blend in with that uneven shape. I realize I'm being a little inarticulate here, but I know what I meant. So now that I know I'm good, I'm marking the back of this. and. I'm This is the new-ish Milwaukee 18 gauge nailer. It was given to me quite a while ago and um, I just haven't got around to using it. I haven't been doing much finishing work. But I've had a play with it already and it's quite nice. Well, we can go through Rima. That's a good sign. Can I have a go? Yeah. Oh, that one popped out. Yep, let me just get everything in place first. All right, Jess, it's your time to shine. Is this the first Milwaukee tool I've ever used? I don't know, is it? I know I've used the stapler. <laughs> the big guns. Exactly. All right, what am I doing? And how so, do I use it? Just, it needs a couple of nails there. The further out you nail, the better. And then it prevents it from cupping. If you only nail the middle, then the outside can move. Yeah, so and I you, press the red bit? You press it in first and then you pull the trigger. Like that? Yep. And no, then, anything else I need to be aware of? No. No, okay. You, you need Evidently, to, yes. Yeah, well, so you push it in more and you have to keep the pressure on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
That's more like it. Nice. Thank you. Don't, they don't have to be perfectly where the X's are, right? No. Okay. There you go. Not bad, Jess. Yeah, not terrible. Can I do another one? Yeah, over this side we need more. Ugh. Oh no, that one failed. Okay, I'll punch them, don't worry. Sun's just creeping away. Got my weather seal already on here. Look at that. There's so many things I'm gonna trip over. <laughs> and I made it so it always looked like that. That's my theory anyway. Put an architrave over here. I've got to seal all the window, obviously. Oh my god! I've still got to add a couple more here with some rubber seals on it to seal the center column, but I'm really proud of this. This is awesome. This is sealed and it looks like they always looked. It looks like the 1960s window that was here before. But it's double glaze and weather sealed. Expanding foam. You know what it smells like? What? Silly string. It's probably the same stuff. It smells like kids' birthday parties. <laughs> that can't be good for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, as well, the ends well. I had a good day. And I'm feeling confident about the windows. I think we've got a system that's going to work. And they look like legit, they look like they've always been there now. That's what I wanted, that's what I always aim for with renovations. I tried to make it look like it was always like that, but bring the performance up. Also I picked up this little nugget here, this little golden nugget here. Carpentry in New Zealand, it's a textbook from the 1970s. And it's basically a how-to guide, tools, techniques, standards to build a house just like this. I mean, look at this. And that bottom windowsill part is in this book. It tells you how to do quarter sawn. All the wall framing is like our wall framing. How cool is that? Once a year here in Nelson, they have a Nelson book fair. It's at this big hall and it's just thousands of books. And I dug and I found this. Pretty cool, huh?